Well, to take an even closer look at the position of Russia on that world stage, we can speak now to Professor of Russian Studies at the University of St. Galen in Switzerland, Ulrich Schmid. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, just looking at that summit, you know, a three-day international summit, he's joined by over 20 heads of state. You know, this summit clearly showing that Putin does have power globally. He hasn't lost it at all, despite Western efforts. In a certain sense, yes, but at the same time, we shouldn't overestimate uh, the significance of this summit. Um, I think already the fact that more than 20 head of states are attending is a success uh, for Putin. But at the same time, uh, there are also some bitter pills to swallow. So, for instance, uh, the Serbian president is absent and also the Kazakh uh, president is absent. And at the same time, uh, we are hearing rumors uh, that even the Brazilian president did not have a domestic accident, uh, but uh, that the agendas between Brazil and Russia are so diverging uh, that President uh, Dalula preferred to attend online and not in person. Oh, indeed. We had been uh, told that he was unable to, but maybe that's more a choice rather than a necessity. Interesting. Um, but, you know, seeing this grouping of nations, it started with just the, 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 the BRIC countries themselves, that acronym, but it's expanded very rapidly. You know, are all these countries coming together to form what Putin would like to see, a global East, a, a real counterweight to the West in the world? This is clearly the claim that especially Putin has. But uh, at the same time, we have to see that this is a very heterogeneous club uh, from the very beginning on. Uh, as you know, uh, in, back in 2001, it was an economist who defined uh, the group of the BRIC uh, countries. And uh, then these countries took up uh, this proposal and decided to form uh, this organization. And the enlargement uh, that is now being announced or already taking place rather weakens the whole uh, organization, uh, then uh, strengthens it. Because we do have very diverging uh, genders among uh, the, the member states. So, for instance, Russia and Iran are extremely interested to create alternative uh, trade platforms, alternative payment systems to evade uh, the heavy sanctions uh, they're under. And at the same time, uh, we do have other countries who are just in favor of a multilateral world order, such as Brazil or India. And they, at the same time, want uh, to continue to have very good relations also with Western countries, including the United States. Indeed, Russia and Iran, under sanctions, want to move away from using the dollar, for example, and find another way around that. Uh, but when you look at the, the last year or so, the, the war in Ukraine, the invasion by Russia, ha hasn't really tarnished him in his relationship with this group of countries. Yes, because uh, Russia did not succeed uh, to create uh, support for Russia's position in uh, the Ukraine war. If we look, for instance, uh, at the Indian Prime Minister Modi, uh, he um, showed up in Kiev, which was a huge diplomatic success for Ukraine. Uh, of course, um, Modi also uh, did uh, not introduce sanctions against Russia. Uh, he has met up with Putin, but at the same time, there were also clear critical signals uh, from India uh, at the address of Moscow. So, for instance, uh, before the full-scale invasion in 22, there was an annual meeting, always in December, between the two head of states of India and Russia. And for the first time in December 22, India cancelled uh, this uh, meeting and Modi also said at one point uh, that uh, this is not a time for war, but it's a time for peace. And uh, a similar position uh, can also be seen in Beijing. Uh, the Chinese are not amused uh, with this war. And uh, I think this is also one of the many problems that this heterogeneous summit has to cope with. Do you expect any, any real outcome from this three-day summit? 
Well, uh, the big items on the agenda are, of course, the buzzword de-dollarization. Uh, I don't think uh, that uh, there will be any significant success. But as I said already, uh, the fact uh, that Putin managed to get 20 head of states uh, to Russia is an enormous uh, diplomatic success and will send out signals uh, to the West and to the United States uh, that Putin is not as isolated as the West would like him to be. Ulrich Schmidt, thanks so much for your time and joining us here on France 24. Very much appreciated.